Hello everybody, I'm Daniel Goodman. This is Christopher Drave, and this is Matt. Wise. Very unhappy wife. <laughs> it's un it's not that I'm unhappy about what we're gonna talk about. It's it's what it's, it's toxic. It's what it's leading into that I'm very unhappy about. <laughs> yeah. Um so as many of you know, we've done two videos of this already. You about could, to go to you three. Can, you can even say it was a wolf's watch, for all we know. But we're still talking about this. Yeah, we're we're paying close attention to the situation with the Rosemont, I mean, Chicago Wolves. Okay, and to be fair, the reason why I feel like this... Oh, the future Chicago Express. Yeah. Anyone doesn't get that? Look it up. Seriously. Yeah. It's not pretty. But no, okay. <laughs> the reason that we're really, like, I think that it should be addressed that we talk about this is that this does affect the AHL Central Division yep. because it does leave us with a pending, poten or potentially pending AHL realignment. And we as Admirals fans know pretty well that it's really annoying. <laughs> yes, let's go play Charlotte again. On a total island on the East Coast and then our only East Coast, uh, you know, division affiliate, which that's that's not annoying. Nope. No, let's go play um, Colorado, which is up in the mountains and everybody gets altitude sickness. So that's not annoying. Just or saying. Uh, what's even worse for the Texas Stars because they're going to be they're going to be a total island in the Central Division with the they, closest team one thousand five hundred miles away from them. That's terrible. Yep. That's that's what we're looking at. But let's get into this. Let's, yeah. All right. So apparently Wolves owner Don Levins Ooh. knew from the start of the season that the his team affiliation with the Wolves or with the with the Knights would be coming to an end. Can I put a pause on that for one second? I, I was about to say Wolves because uh, I know. Ah! But no, that was a little. Can I, in you, there. you can do another aha after this. Okay, Don, you're telling me that you've been spending this entire time, and I, I get it. You have an off season left. To still say, oh, we're still in the AHL, even though he didn't say that. He's going to be vying to stay in the AHL as much as he possibly can. You're, you're, you're telling me that it wasn't until now that you have how many... Because he well, he went on the record to say he has how many affiliates that are in his pocket. Like, he could call them out at any point, any point and any time that they'll sign with the Wolves. You're telling me that you knew at the beginning of the season that this was going on and you, you have nothing to show for it? You could have both had a mutual split before this season starts and relieved us all of this giant headache. But well, you especially wanted to be a part, you wanted to be a little attention horror. Well, just well not even do this. not even that. Like I feel this is you where this is where I'm even more mad about the whole situation because it sounds like Chicago was kind of dangling it a little bit. Like San Antonio wouldn't have had to start an 18th season for nothing. Yeah. Yeah, they would have been able to. Here, let's let you have your 18th season, be able to or celebrate. Or just end your 17th season, talk in the off season, bow out at three years or something because it wasn't working in Chicago apparently. This is just the you, you let the Blues, you should have, Vegas should have initially went with San Antonio. Yes. And, and just left it as it was. It would have been a lot closer. It, you, Oh, I'm not this Chicago is... people, you think you're uh, smarter and better than us? Get the sign. Get, people. Give me the yeah, sign. People give this the most headache. All right, but again, for me, it's not the this fans. This is pure opinion of us. This is not this the is... fans. This is not the fans' fault of Chicago. This is not the team's fault. It's the front office and their ownership. We would say this for any team if any team did this, including our own. Because it's not the team's fault. Because the team puts the product on the ice. It's it not the fans' been, fault because the fans finance it by it putting their time and effort. Hate, we hate your owner like you guys hate your owner. But come on. Come on. Yeah. And this, again, to reflect, if you count the Thrashers, the, the Thrashers Jets as as two separate teams, this is their fifth affiliate. Sixth, technically, because well, yes, that would yeah. be two. Yeah. And this would be six. This yeah. is five. But, but just come, the one that has But one. again, that how many affiliates gone through in the span of ten years? That that's, doesn't that's look the good. Key point right there. Ten years you've had that many affiliates. Ten what years. What the hell is wrong with you? Ten years with less than five years per contract completed. Many of them going uncompleted. 
That's disgusting. This one be one. And That's the toxic. only and the only reason you kept the Atlanta one so long is because the ownership was too busy embezzling money out of the damn team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's why they lost their team in the first place. Yeah. Flamers? Yeah. Uh, no, I was... Well, the Thrashers. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm All right, anyway, so they did propose that the Board of Governors is going to be the three-year partnership with the Wolves will conclude and end at the end of this season. Okay, and... like so That's let's, official. Let's talk about the Board of Governors thing one more time because apparently it didn't sync with some people. The Board of Governors will basically decide whether or not this thing's happened. So basically our our uh, principal owner, Harris Tour, for example, will attend a meeting and basically either vote yay or nay on this transaction. Because... And I, I honestly think... Like, of anybody that I think would disagree with this thing, it's probably going to be the Texas Stars because they don't like having a, a, close, a, a close rival being forced to move. Yeah, yeah. So, and then that leaves Vegas to stick with the Chicago contract, which they don't have to bow out of until uh, they get the approval. Or they just bow out or go somewhere else, like, basically. They bow out and they go, okay, you're not going to let us move to this team, fine. Will you at least let us create one? Yeah. And then they go that route. Then, well, because it's, then you really leave the wolves on an island with no one. Exactly. But then again, it's like supposedly it's significantly cheaper to relocate. Yeah. And that's the thing. Yeah. That's the entire thing. I don't thing. why, but... But again, like it's... Because when yeah. you buy the team, you get all the equipment, all the, all the naming rights, the staff, everything. Yeah. You literally have to start from the found. You have to you have to literally build your own foundation. Yeah. Like, like if you have. A, so if you buy a team and relocate, your foundation's already there. You just you just put the house on wheels and move it. it. Yeah, I was gonna say you just dig a hole and drop it in. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Um. So, let let's. Honestly, somebody should dig a hole and drop the wolves in it. Do us all a favor. Spare the fans the heartache. <sighs> All right, so Better, yeah, drop the on a out. relatable note, uh, let's take a look here. Yeah. Usually, I don't pay attention. Let me to let me read that one little politics. this one right here. No, 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 no. Let me read the one on above. It's like one of Don Levin's primary wishes is for the Wolves to field a competitive team every year. I understand that, Don. It's great to have a competitive team, but your main goal of being an AHL affiliate is to develop. Not ain't that competitive. In, ain't that in the contract? You develop. You, to develop, you develop to make a competitive team. You, you develop. Don't be one. You are not meant to be a Calder Cup contender. You become a Calder Cup contender if by fielding a developing team. Yeah. Okay. Let, let me read two things here. Um, one, in the end, he figures a solid organization will come calling. Although it does not figure to be the Blackhawks, which everybody, okay, he's I know, done. Oh, right everybody, oh God, everybody, everybody, everybody on our comments feed that keeps saying this. I know, like I know, you in your mind you think that it can work. It will not. Stop bringing it up. Rockford One big is, head, two big head. Rock, not work. Rockford right. is not going to sacrifice it. Uh, the Blackhawks are not going to sacrifice their own reputation by basically telling a city of rockford owned team that oh you guys aren't good enough for us that's bad press it doesn't look good also the blackhawks are sticking in nine hundred thousand dollars annually just to have a piece of the pie in the rockford equation i wonder there. if these people don't know what annually means it means yearly, yearly people yeah we might have to simplify also, words for certain also people. The Wolves do not get along with the Blackhawks. The Blackhawks do not get along with the Wolves. Do a little look-see look online as to why they don't get along. Even on Wikipedia it says why they don't get along. I mean, they you're diss down each in other. Chicago, you have everything. Go on the internet. You have that. You'll find All right, so secondary. Let's talk about this. All right. In the past, we've been approached by teams in the past. If this ever co happens, consider us. Okay. Let's put it this way. In the past, most teams didn't own their a any AHL affiliate. And now so, we've got a whole... Well, it, it's almost kind of like NHL is kind of pushing that now. For Was it full ownership AHL. or something? Does the NHL own the AHL? No. no. They're still uh, independent. They're, how is it that NHL has so much pull with the AHL? 
Well, it's because they were able to get along with many of the the clubs. That's the thing. The clubs are more than willing to to work with the AHL or the NHL's wishes, and even to the more even more so, the AHL proves as an experimental working grounds for new rules and regulations as well. Like the three man shootout, the three on three overtime, and uh. Seattle. Um, and, oh, yeah, hockey on the West Coast? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All of those things were tested in the AHL. Let's not forget the entire disaster that fitting the uh, Quad Archer. City Flames, Peoria Riverman, Rockford Icehawks, Chicago Wolves, and... The, Illinois, the total Illinois division. Yeah, there were like... <laughs> yeah. yeah, there were four teams at one point in Illinois. You think, you, think you think it was a junior... You think it was the USHL, for God's sake. And now you have, like, what, four teams in the AHL like, in California? Look how many teams are... Like, if you go to the but USHL... California is a much bigger state. Again, they've got they've got the population density to handle that. Yeah, yeah, they do. But look, like it looked more at one point Illinois actually looked like the USHL now with how many Iowa teams they have there. Good lord. Yeah, yeah. I mean right. junior hockey and that's development, but still, for, how many pro, you don't need that many pro teams because yes, they are minor pro, but still these players are getting paid. Every everybody that says like, oh, the Admirals aren't, you know, uh you know, aren't a, aren't a professional team? They're getting paid. That's professional. I they're think under paid. pro contracts with the NHL. Yeah, or, or the pro. or the AHL contracts with the the Admirals. That's yeah. pro. You're getting paid. All right, sir. So final comment here from him was: We are in a good location. We're close to a lot of places. You do have to go by plane. But there's a lot of flights out of O'Hare. Okay, did he just drop sponsorship to O'Hare? Yeah. Because you know, wait, aren't they aren't the wolves in an agreement with that airport? Anyway? Partially, like I guess. All right, so let's also look at this part because we want to find the best possible fit for us, having some veterans, and being able to win some games. Because remember, it's all about winning. It's all about winning. It's not about developing. It's about winning. Let me ask you this: How many? Uh, how many like how, hang on? Okay. How many ahead. cups would uh, St. Louis have if they didn't develop, like they did the year before? Uh, the they'd cup? have ten. Yeah. No, they'd have like zero. It's zero. They'd still be at zero. Yeah. Look, look at look at Pittsburgh. How would they? How many cups would they have if they did not? If Wilkes Bar did not develop Flurry and Latang? Uh, they'd have like ten, maybe half, maybe a third, a quarter of that. What's the correct maybe. answer, Dave? Or they'd zero? have maybe two. Yeah. Out of the four that they have. Yeah. You just think about it. Look at Nashville when it never got to the cup against got to the cup. Never even gotten there. Because the, we, ha, because this team knows their role. Our Rockford, the Chicago, never would have got Nehemi or Crawford to where they were without the help from Rockford. Yeah. Brendan Peary, who plays for the Wolves. Yeah. Rockford, Chicago. Mm-hmm. And now Chicago got the Sakura boys uh, in the pipeline, ready to break out. So yeah, Chicago actually has a bright future outside of the Wolves. They're All right, the so Blackhawks have a bright future. Yeah, right. Blackhawks so, have a bright future. Yeah, they do. All right, so let's add this back, back up one more time because we already know where this next one's going. Oh crap! We're going to talk into. The Wolves saying what he wants from their next affiliate. Because, you know, it's 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 the, it's the NHL affiliate that's supposed to ask the AHL or demand, like, demand uh, making the demands with the AHL affiliate. They're the ones that are putting their ace, was it their ace prospect on their side. But, you know, this guy doesn't have that figured out. <laughs> All right. So let's I'm sorry. Get... Does Harris Turr demand, was it demand, uh, does, does Harris Turr of our Milwaukee Admirals demand, you know, for, you know, satisfaction from the Nashville Predators? No. I'd like to think not. I, I'd like to think Nashville demands satisfaction from the Admirals because if they can't Clearly make us the competitive... Predators are happy with what we're doing. We're, I mean, look at this. We're not having this conversation about no, the Admirals. We're, we're not. about the Wolves. And, like, this is the thing. The bad part about <laughs> this is... We still step back to, we feel like utter crap for, for the fans, for the fans the not only of the Wolves, and the players, 
We I feel play, bad we, for the players. I feel bad for the players who have to listen to this and probably get questioned by the media for this. Yeah, because, you know, or just down getting, there in Chicago, or, even Like, I'm not suggesting that this happens, but there's also the possibility that this is this is a, a an owner that is pressuring players to basically, like, oh, you, like, we don't want, we, we want you to stay at this level. Like, this is the only place that matters. This is the only place that matters. Like, it's not like it's not the NHL. This is the only place that matters. Okay, that, there are not a hundred of Darren Hadars and Brett Sterlings in the world who are going to be career AHLers that are going to put up seventy points, and NHL teams are not going to scoop them up. I'm sorry, Daniel Carr got scooped up by an NHL team because he's a good hockey player. Now. Here's the thing. May he spend his career in the AHL level? Yes, but most of the time it's going to be on a two-way contract. Yeah, because he, Darren does, he Hadar, does deserve to play in the NHL. And, and here's the thing. When you sit here and look at this, I bet you he's going, thank God I got out of there. Yep. There goes the sign. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about this first. It's a wreck, just like the Wolves manager. That's true. All right, let's talk about this. Uh-oh, Daniel took off the hat. He's getting serious. All right, All fire right. away, man. Fire away. All right. my hat inside out. <laughs> <laughs> fire away. You got your rally cap on. Yeah. All right, so Don Levin says he knows what he wants. Uh-oh. It kind of sounds like a billionaire who's got a little bit of an ego trip. But, okay, yeah, let's yeah, talk yeah. about what uh, you what want. What do you want? All right, we want somebody that understands to develop young t- players, you need to have a winning culture. You need to surround them with players who can make them better. Okay. I kind of agree. Extent, I understand. I again. I understand what that means. I get that. But, but know your place. Yeah. Know your role. You're Here's the thing. Around. If like if boxes. if you're if okay if Nashville came to us next year and goes, okay, we're taking your whole team, and you get outside of Connor Ingram. 22 other guys straight out of juniors. Yeah. We have to live with that. Yep. Yeah, we, we, we're not in the position. We're our, it's our coaching staff's job to make yeah. them competitive. Yeah. Our coaching staff, the GM, that's it. And here's the thing. When you have somebody working in unison, and here's the thing. You don't get to tell them what you want. No. They tell no. you what they want, and then you do your best to be competitive with that. Because, you know, let me just put it out there, because if we're going to do this all Sesame Street style, NHL big, AHL small. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about this? NHL daddy, AHL kid. Yeah. No, it's more like AHL prepubescent teen, <laughs> ECHL baby. Yeah. 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 But we're saying... Here's the thing. Even with the ECHL, when you look at Milwaukee's team, when we had Cincinnati, we sent Freddie Gaudreau down there. And his rookie year, he came back here the next year. Mm-hmm. So hard that Nashville gave him a contract. Yeah. We did, helped the system work together to develop this player. And again, the other thing that working on part of, like working in the EHL is like you have an opportunity to work with two organizations as well apart from running your own it's a team effort so you, you you can't just focus on yourself you can't be a selfish organization hey guess what when we open our show our show will we talk about Florida it's Florida to Milwaukee when we talk about the Admirals it's Milwaukee to Nashville talk about the Predators. Nashville, it's Nashville to the Stanley Cup. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Our, that is our... Here's the thing. That's the as goal. Much we as, just explain to the Wolves' ownership how the chain of command works. Let's put it this way. Idiots. Every year, every team wants to win the Calder Cup. Every, we get that. Every team wants to win something. That's the thing. And guess I know what? it's funny. All these years, I thought Milwaukee was full of idiots. I think it's the large markets that are full of idiots. Us small market people, we seem to have a brain. <laughs> I Chicago. like having a brain, don't you? Yeah. And, and, How about and, you? Do you enjoy having a brain? I enjoy having a brain so much. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. We came in this with trying to be nice to the Wolves organization. We really did. Yeah, and I then you the fans here, and the players. Let's the put it this way. Let me give you Don Levins a piece of advice. Sell the team. 
Actually, no, this would be for future yeah. reference oh. if if he continues to do this. Watch our show. We'll teach you how to run. <laughs> no. Um, how about this? I was once told by a wise man, my grandfather, told me. He was in the military. He was in army, in the army. My other grandpa told me the same thing. He was in the Navy. He said it is what best known to keep your mouth shut and be considered a fool than to open your mouth and you remove, remove all doubt. Hey, CM Punk used that same thing. And I was told that at five years yeah, old because CM Punk I was... used that same line, but it's true. That it's is a, a very, good point. It is a very... You're removing all doubt that you are a bad owner. Yeah. I'm not, I can't call you a moron because... But unfortunately, he, you don't even need to worry about the doubt now because you already have several... Affiliates over the span of ten years that say you suck. That say this didn't work. Like again, we are. I've said this in another video, yeah. another of our uh, unofficial was it off the record videos. We're lucky in Milwaukee to have a night. Was it going on nineteen year? It's going to be twenty next year. Yeah, yeah. Twenty, twenty years. It'll be twenty next year of a tw twenty years straight of one affiliate. That's pretty. What impressive. do you have to show for it, Chicago? Twenty affiliates. In Here's 20 years. here. Let's just talk about this, okay? When you were with Atlanta, Atlanta didn't give two darns what you did. They just wanted the. Fine. They just wanted you. Just a just, system in place. That's it. Just they wanted to be place. able to send guys to you every once in a while and go here develop this guy. Yep. And then here's what you did with that player. You sat there and you put him in the ECHL with Fort Wayne at the time because yep. they've been consistent with Fort Wayne for yep. quite a few years now. Yep. All right. So then you go with that. And then when, when when one of your guys would go up to Atlanta because, well, you were winning Stanley Cup or Calder Cup after Calder Cup after Calder Cup, eventually your guys are just going to be like, uh, NHL money? Okay, bye. Yeah. Also, it should be mentioned again that Fort Wayne is now waning on the on the Wolves affiliation. They're not happy with it at all. Let's, let's ask this question, okay? NHL, pl a, a hockey player in general. Okay. When you start at five, year old, five years old, what's your immediate goal? NHL. What's that again? NHL. NHL. Is it to play in the NHL? No, no, NHL. Stanley Cup. Okay. When you're a certain, trophy. Hang on. When Stanley you're about Cup. 28 years old and haven't made it to the NHL yet, then what? Then it's the NHL. Yeah. Then yeah. it's winning a Calder Cup. Then it's doing... But you're talking about... Do you, you want your affiliate to just give you a group of 28-year-olds? He yeah, he's like, oh, well, we need seasoned vets. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Here's the thing. Do you not know the the what the, the collective bargaining agreement that's changing next year with yeah. the veteran rules? Yeah. What what do you what do you what do you gain? I'm not sure we should probably do a video about the CBA. Yeah, that's true. That, that's coming down our pipeline eventually. Yeah, some hockey one oh one videos. Yeah. yeah, especially with league regulations and I, I really want to break down the CBA because there's stuff in the CBA that even I'm clueless to. Well, anyway. Anyway, let's continue. Yeah. Let's continue into this statement because I only got halfway through. <laughs> Again, that, that's the like opening statement of this article. I've only gotten halfway through and we talked about for 20 minutes. Right, okay, that was part one of that. Now let's get on to part two. Dan, take it away. All right. A lot of teams believe that they do put themselves on the ice more and more. More time, more time, more time on the... What the heck? Yeah, that hurt my head the first time I read it. <laughs> Are you sure that's an exact quote? So let me quote let me just let me tr let me try. No, this, this is, is an exact quotation. Quote. Let's see. Quote, unquote. A lot of teams believe that all they do is put them on the ice. More time, more time, more time on the ice. What happens is you have people that don't know how to make them better. Well, um, excuse me, but let me check this out. How many rookies are succeeding in Milwaukee's organization right now? Oh, uh, Jeremy Davies and um, Rem Pitlick. Rem Pitlick. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but, but we're just putting him on the ice more time, more time, more time. Oh, Tommy Novak, who's on an AHL how contract. You, how do you expect rookies to not get better by not putting them on? How do you expect them to get better when they're scratched for the night? Yeah. How do you ex how do you expect any development to your parent that that came to you for for an AHL an NHL to AHL affiliation? How do you expect them to get better? How do you expect the improvement? You're not going to get it. I, I agree. All right, so this is the fifth time since 2010. So, yeah, five. Um, That's not counting. So, if you count Atlanta and Winnipeg as no, separate? No, they are counting that. Nope. 
This is the. They are at one. They're oh, counting okay. that both yeah. as one. Okay. That's that's even worse. Yeah. They're counting Winnipeg and Atlanta as one. That's their fifth. Yeah. So it would be six if you count them as two. Yeah. That's bad. That's... All right. Anyway. Boy, it's not good. Anyway, he goes. We need. Levin used as an example in 2009, 2010, when Chris Chelios was paired with a young defenseman, and Arturis Kuda. Calder. Calder. Who? Calder went on to a long career, mostly in Europe. Exactly. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Continue though. Continue. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm not, I'm not trying. I'm not taking away from the Europe League. No, no, They're no, no, very no. Good. Let's go. Let's go. Um, he had a plus forty six in sixty six games next to Chelios. Then again, Chelios can make anybody look good. Yeah. In the mm-hmm. AHL. The reason he did so Quote. is. Quote, like, again, this is Levin speaking again. This is Levin's yet again speaking. The reason he did is because Chelia showed him what he was supposed to do. Continue. All right. If you put your kids out there with other kids who don't know or have the experience, the knowledge, they don't, they go out there and they don't know how to get better. They want to get better, but they don't know how. And coaching can change during practice. But on the ice, it's different and on ice, in different situations. The coaches may not have been defensemen, forwards, or goalies, so they don't have the experience to show these young players how to be better. Uh, <laughs> this is my reaction. Uh, uh, this is second. my reaction. Hold on. Do Here you not know what a coach is supposed to do? Well, it's huh? the coach's job to teach these people what they need to do. The veteran player is more like a tutor in college. The right. coach's job is supposed to be the professor to teach. And just for the record, everybody, Dan left to do something, and here's Jason Voorhees, because even Dan can't handle it, but apparently Jason can. Uh, anyways, like I said, the coach is like a professor in college. They teach you what you need to know. A right. veteran player is supposed to be like a student, uh, what's I... the word, a tutor. All right, for first-hand experience, so, I'm yeah. speaking of this from first-hand. I think he's trying to make the job easy for the coaches. But the doing? coach's job shouldn't be easy. It's his job to do I, it. I, yes. I know. I'm explaining to you what the owner of the Wolves is trying to do by bringing up the whole Chelios, Chelios factor, defending his way of doing it. He wants tutors here, to be the teachers and teachers to sit on their ass and you, crush. I do have okay. something. I do have something to say on this. I'm not saying because there, right. there, there is a big piece in this. Why Chris Chelios even signed with the Wolves in the first place? Because he asked to go to the Blackhawks and the Blackhawks went. We don't have the money right now. It was out of spite, in, in a way, like I would think. And and here's the thing. The only reason he was there is because his wife had cancer, and the cancer, the Chicago is, has one of the best cancer treatment buildings in the United States, and he wanted to be near her. He never traveled with the team on the road. Mm-hmm. He never went anywhere. When they went, it, like if he if they were in Milwaukee or somewhere like that, somewhere that would close, be arbitrary. Like Rock yeah, or yeah. Close. If something happened, he could get you know go leave it's the game. Close. It's on it's off on I ninety four off I forty three. Yeah, this was back close. still even when they had Quad City, Rockford, Peoria, yeah, Iowa so the, division. Yeah, the, the Illinois division. Excuse me. There. Yeah. So I'm just saying, there's a lot of those things, but the biggest problem I have is, y'all people make me not smoke on this show, and he make my head hurt. I feel my brain cells depleting. <laughs> like to just say, like it's all like it's it's all up to the players. That is a gross, disgusting. Like I said, he's trying to he's trying to just pay the coaches to sit on their ass and expect the players to do the teaching. That seems to be the mentality of the. I, and, that and, and, that and, just and, seems lazy. It's I, know, I never lazy. said it was. No, 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 no. Right. Explaining the mentality. Yeah. it's flat out lazy. It, it is. Yeah, all right. markets are lazy. They so are. let's talk a little more because Wait, he kept he's, running his mouth. He's, he's still, still talking. talking. He's still talking. Jesus okay. Christ, dude, shut up. All right, so he goes, with that being said, Levin pointed out to NHL teams that bringing up young players because they, because of how much the top end's rosters get paid, Levin pointed brought to the NHL players who may not have been ready or could use another year of seasoning or two, to tr- always trying to win. So basically, here's let's put it this way. I, I'm an AHL owner. I have deep pockets. 
I'm going to give you NHL money to come here and play so that we win Calder Cups. So that we win <clears throat> and develop nobody. Yep. Because they're not part of the system and the NHL team probably has no interest in signing them. You probably broke several arbitration rules and laws nowadays. Yep. You that's why they brought in this arbitration rule with Chelios because of this. Mm -hmm. So it's known as the Chelios rule for a reason. Because as soon as his wife got healthy, he was off to Atlanta. Yep. So this this Anyway, he went on to say oh, they just talking? learning they just learn more and that's what we're looking for. Wake me up when he's done talking. Because okay. he's an idiot. Oh, God. He, he shut up and then said more. Oh, when God. change happens, the Wolves fans will have to connect to new prospects. But considering the fluidity of AHL rosters, a few players have stuck around Rosemont long enough to endure the connecting that, uh, to be created. Probably or it's they just because they have cut it. Yeah, thank you. That's exactly it. Oh, but oh. He's, still he's, he's still talking. Oh, yes. my God, dude. Really? Shut up, guys. Part of the problem is we haven't had players here for a long time. That is in part... Uh, it, uh, what? That part That's of the, the next part of e the equation is trying to deal with somebody who is saying, look, we want to have three or four players that we want to sign for three or four years, and we have them become more Chicago Wolves players <laughs> than we have good players. They have to be good to develop the younger players. It's not all on the players. Thank you. Uh, what is the coaching staff for? What's the GM for? <laughs> oh, right. You are the GM. Uh, Do you not see the problem here? <laughs> They're GM is a complete tool bag. No, no GM is Wendell Young. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I I'm no in, in the heat of the moment is. because, it, it, I'm sorry, it just seems like Don is the GM at this point because he can't figure it out. It sounds like he micromanages every little aspect of this. He's the Jerry Jones of the American Hockey League. Oh, Go God. That's putting it lightly. He makes Jerry Jones look like a Sunday school teacher. Sign. Sign. Sign, protect me. <laughs> oh, God. You didn't need to hurt yourself. But no, but think the Admiral protected me. He's got, it's embroidered, so that's perfect. Oh. But what are we doing here? Let's put it this way. If I was a Wolves fan, I'd be showing up the rest of the season like this. Paper bank, preferably. It's probably cheaper. These are like $2 at a Halloween store. Paper bags, uh, they biodegrade. This and is... you can get them at a liquor store, which you'll need. <laughs> uh, I wasn't even trying to go that road. Okay. I took the high road. He's the one that brought up liquor. I took the high road. But, but if you need some, space, come on up here. We got some of the best. And Wolves fans, uh, if I were you, I'd stop supporting this team until your owner goes bye-bye. What this I would thing. do, if I'm you, I'm showing up to every game Demanding. With, demanding that he sell. Even if he sells locally, that's not that big of a deal. Find a different owner that gets it, like that figures out their role. Yeah, one that's not a, one that's not related that's, to him or a friend of his. It has to be completely independent, one that he don't know squat about. Or, please, some and friends and family hey, will probably hey, just preach the same hey, watch, mentality. Watch this does. joke. St. Louis, please buy the wolves and move them to OKC. Uh, how about oh, oh, oh. moving the KC? Uh, yeah, you, you said that. How about even, Kansas City? Oh, even OKC would yeah. be, make sense. Oklahoma, yeah, it's yeah. within it's within vicinity. Oklahoma has been vying to get an AHL team back Heck, to, since the Barons were relocated to Bakersfield. Yeah. Wait, wait. Oklahoma. Right? Yeah, the OKC Barons. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a hockey in Oklahoma. Yeah. Yeah. When the o when the Thunder first went there, they brought they brought in a hockey team with them. Yeah. They play in the same uh, I, venue. Uh, I, yeah. Yeah, they they I, they brought the more the attendance. Know, they I, I, I don't know what to say. I I don't know what to say. Hockey in Oklahoma just don't go hand in hand. Well, like, they, so actually, they had sports. above average attendance. Yes, and they, they were, were beating us in attendance. Yeah, they were beating us in oh. attendance. Well, yeah, I could see it. I guess. 
I mean, we're also talking about us while we're this. They're beating us in attendance while we're all going on maybe a 15 year of making the playoff stretch. Yeah. Wow. So at that time, and then we're tired. Anyways, yeah. Uh, Oklahoma or Kansas City would be a good spot. I mean, I'm just at this point. We feel bad for the two organizations on our green screen tonight because the Vegas has to endure this for the rest of the year, and, and the Blues, they're kind of like, where do we go? Oh, we're, we're, no, no, not even that. They're like, shoot, we, we have no San Antonio affiliation anymore after this season. Where do we go? If 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 we go with Chicago, we're just going to be wait, unhappy. Wait, wait. Why was San Antonio able to be purchased if they were still affiliated with the Blues? Well, because they were privately owned. Because independently. Yeah, so they broke the contract just to make the sale. Which yeah. that can be easily. Was it, that, that's what I was yeah. getting at. That if can, they had yeah. the contract that if, needed to be broken if in a, order for the sale to be. If, this is, if the if, all pending approval. Yeah, all pending approval, and if the money comes through, Does basically. Does anybody know how many years they currently have left on that deal? Maybe that's what slows yeah. up the board of directors. Or no. Well, the, what, if anything, it would be a void of contract. I'm sure would there be a cash sum that the the Blues would get probably. For it and most yeah, more than likely, have to pony up the dough exactly. Right? That's well, I'm sure it's like, part hey, of that. Just sum. Got the money, just yeah, or yeah, the GM, I need like or the, the was it bucks. the money would come from the Spurs? Was it Spurs Sports and Entertainment Group? Yeah, that which again, probably the, the, the money that Vegas is floating to them because if you're this thing, you can't be poor. Yeah. If you own the Vegas Golden Knights, you're in Vegas, so you can't be poor because all that gambling money you got floating into that team. <laughs> Well, Is like, Caesars Entertainment over yeah. the Golden Knights? Yeah. I'm just saying, at this point, it's making us... Uh, all I say is, this is going to be my final video talking about this subject, because it hurts my head. Please don't give us There's another one. There's things in the city that give me a headache. I don't want Chicago uh, the only thing, stuff to give me a headache. The too. only thing I want to talk about after this this point on the is... The conclusion after well, all said and done. Not so much that. I just want to know... if. I want to hear that the Blues are getting a good place, a good affiliation. I want them to move, like I said, like I wanted to move to KC because that would expand the Missouri, was it the Missouri uh, affiliation window a little bit more for them. And heck, if they play their cards right, they could easily find an ECHL affiliate right in Missouri, have a, a whole hockey like a hockey stadium for them. Or even if you could just give Oklahoma that ECHL brand. Yeah, yeah, just keep it in that area. I would even say ECHL in Missouri and then put, uh, yeah, OKC. OKC would make sense for that because I don't think that, um, what was that, uh, they don't have the uh, seating capacity at the... uh, um, Uh, Sprint Center. Yeah, Yeah. for an AHL franchise. Well, thank you. Well, yeah. I mean, I've seen small arenas in the AHL, but they... Kind of, really small. They go, they go away after a couple of years. Yeah. yeah. But um, um, Manchester was one of them. Portland. Portland had a small arena. Uh, Westchester. Uh, Worcester. Worcester has one. Springfield has one. Spring- yeah, sure. Let's not get into that. No, 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 no. no. Right, we'll oh, by the way, what? Um, by the way, in our future videos, pay attention because we have a YouTube exclusive coming on Wednesday. I wonder oh, yeah, what yeah. it could be. Yes. All right, so I think we're done, anyway. But this Dude, was our I, thirty to forty minute rant. Can we on the wolf. final thoughts? Go ahead. Let, let's uh, you start first. I need I, I need to recollect. See, the ambulances are coming because I'm having a seizure. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say the ambulance is coming. He's because having they, ambulance with people. You can't see it, but there's a lot going on in here that's saying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're not making fun of that ailment. But no. this, let's but let's let's put it this way. It's like I just um how do you put it? What's what's name something that kills brain cells? Beer. Okay. Beer. So I just drank four forty eight packs of beer all in like an hour. Ouch. It was Milwaukee's beast of probably. Yeah. And it, oh no. Steel Reserve. And it was uh. You can't well, get worse than Steel Reserve. And it was or uh what was that Mad Dog? Yeah. Oh uh yeah. Uh. No, eh. no, you. No. It was Mad Dog. All right, anyways. Actually, uh, scratch that. I point. just drank four bottles of Everclear. All right, make the point. Oh, oh, oh. All right, make okay. the point. point. Anyway, you hurt my brain, Don Levins. And here's the thing. I, I don't want your fans to leave. I don't want your team to leave because no, I, I mean, like the rivalry. The I Guess rivalry. what? I 
I'm going to admit, I love hating you. Yeah. I was just about to say, if you guys leave, who are we going to hate? Because we don't hate Rockford we like we Rockford. hate you. We, the only other team we're left to hate is Grand Rapids. Or Iowa, even. Yeah. Or grow our hatred with Rockford, which would suck. Yeah, because we have friends down there. It's going to be kind of hard to hate. Yeah. They hate us because we're good right now. <laughs> so does most of the league, except for everybody starting to hate Bellevue, too. Yeah, <laughs> Bellevue's catching up. All right. All right, so the, oh, your you, opinion? Yeah. Go for it. You got an, was it, if I remember correctly, they've got an arena deal that's coming up. Yep, that arena deal's done. So you got you got that to figure out. Good luck to that because I really don't see an AHL team coming here. I, I Again, it'd be a miracle. Well, their luck, like you said, we got, what, six coming with, once uh, Seattle, we'll, we'll have six ECHL slots to fill. Once yeah. Seattle comes into the mix, and uh, have I don't... fun at the Sears Center. Yeah, I mean that's gonna be the the just of it. Have fun at the Sears Center. But this Sears is little stadium. This oh. is... <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about small arenas in Chicago. Have fun at Cicero Stadium. But <laughs> to go on to my final thoughts on yeah, this, this is... Oh, but then they only last there one year like the Chicago Express. Uh, <laughs> you can beat that record. You can do anything. <laughs> but anyway, this is just tiring to see this kind of complacent thinking. And like what we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago, like the definition of insanity is expecting the same results. Or expecting the different better results result by doing the same thing over and over. What do we what have we learned here? Uh, and people call me lazy. Wow, this guy's all sorts of lazy. Wanting his players to play plus coach, while the coaches sit on the bench and do nothing. What what's the role of coach? I mean, here's the thing. Rocky Thompson played for the Wolves for ten years, and then they just here here's a coaching job. We're gonna pay you for life because you gave it to us. We gave just we showed got, loyalty. That's it. Yeah. Guess what? Scott Ford's our assistant coach, and if we suck, he's gone. Yeah, mm-hmm. pretty much. Unfortunately, that's just business, and that's just the way it is, man. That's how this game works. If you can't be competitive, and here's the thing. Oh, no, no, not competitive. Develop. But here's the Develop thing. Develop and, con- and compete. Here's I the really thing. I don't care for com- I sort of do. Here's the thing. When we sit here and look at it, when we had... Even with Evanson, we were developing. Yes. Yeah. We had Arvinson come out of here. There was just complacency in Grimaldi. play with the Evanson system. We had Grimaldi come out of here? Yeah. Or was he a product of Taylor? Taylor. Uh-oh. We had Jan Crick for, well, no, we, we had Jan Crick for, like, what, three games? Yeah. Yossi. Yossi came out of here. Pekka. At, Pekka came out of here out of quad. Suter. Quad. Um, Hamleys. Ryan Ellis came out of the uh, the Dean era. Yep. Out of the end, uh, the beginning of it, but. Oh, uh, what about? <laughs> like uh, Mika Salamaki. Yeah, well, Salamaki's kind of been. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know. Goudreau. Goudreau came out of the Evanson era. Evanson era. Yeah. Oh, uh, Aber. Yeah. Robert. I mean, what we develop, it, it we develop no matter what our coaches do. We and have also, our job. That's our job. What did you say a couple days ago? Like, uh, we we even said like. There's you look around the league. There are ads affiliates everywhere in the or NHL, been, NHL, yeah, overseas. We were looking at NHL 20. Just look, oh, well, what? He's there now. Right. He's here now. Yeah, it's just like one of those things where you just look at it and you're just so happy to see that we can branch but, out to all the corners of the world. Little Milwaukee, mind you, and then you're seeing all this like all these Admirals alumni is global, it's and great, they love it's a, it's it here. A great feeling. They loved it here. The problem is, is that when you have a guy like Chicago who's going to throw that kind of money at a guy like Darren Hadar, who was just told you're you're too injury prone when you come up here, <clears throat> the big hit you're too scared of it. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to take that big hit. It's going to happen. I mean, it's, it is what it is. You got to take that big hit. And it's just that's the situation you run into. If you can't, if you're just wanting to win Calder Cups. Just buy a cup that says Calder on it and be happy with it. I'm pretty sure you guys sell those at the pro shop because you love them so much. They actually do. They're right. I mean, here's the thing. Grand Rapids was competitive for all those years, but yet they still were feeding Detroit. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
you know. Yeah, how the hell that work? Like Grand Rapids was winning all them cups, and Detroit was winning those cups around the same time. How'd that happen? Oh, I don't or know. Or is that just luck? That's good development. Yeah, I, that's good development. How? And if also, you're developing guys to leave you, how are they still staying competitive if they're developing guys that go up? How are they staying well, so competitive? Also, they've got they was it their losing? ownership has like sizable money too. Oh. Yeah. But I'm just saying, yeah. when you sit back... like if you got your minor league team always losing, how are they going to stay competitive if they're always losing guys because they're developing so well? But also, well, that's another reflection of an NHL-AHL affiliation that, you know, is consistent because Detroit's not leaving that anytime soon. No. And, and, and let's look into this, okay? The only other one that's longer than us is Hershey. Yeah. Yeah, and they're not leaving. I don't see them leaving the Caps. And and, and I know I understand Wilkesboro, but remember, you guys in nine in two thousand and three or two thousand and five or somewhere in there, mm -hmm. you were with um, Philadelphia for it a was. year. No, Wilkes Barre. Yeah, yeah. They were known as something else. So. Wilkes Barre Scranton. Yeah, no, it was before the Calder Cup years, but I don't think that they. I don't know. I I mean right. I don't yeah. remember. Yeah. But let's just put it this way. If you can't keep your a NHL team happy, you're not going to keep your contract. Yep. What are I see press runs being done on the Admirals making the players happy. Sure. When you see a press yes. run on that, you know you're doing your job. Yep. An NHL press run. Yeah. Yeah, NHL.com. Which uh, was like just Patrick, a Patrick couple Williams. days ago. We yeah, one. Patrick Williams talking about us, giving us some good press. The NBC, no matter how much they hate Nashville, will talk about Milwaukee yeah. and how good we do. Look at all this development right out of Milwaukee. Yeah. The road to, again, the road to Nashville goes through Milwaukee. Yeah. Yep. It's not, it's not just a catchy, you know, it's not, slogan. It's not a catchy slogan. It's a way It's water. It's, it's real. a fact. It's a legit fact. If you look at anybody on the Nashville roster, except for the guys they traded for or have signed out of free agency. Milwaukee, 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 Milwaukee. Every single one of them has been de developed here. And when you develop your players in-house like they do, you're going to grow a family, team, atmosphere, and you're going to be competitive because they play for each other. Mm-hmm. When, when, when guys like Tenorti go up there with him being the captain here... He, 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 I bet you he still wonders, oh, God, what if I go back there, what are, are the fans going to be mad at me? Or, you know, you know, you got to wonder about that because you, you feel bad for the guys who get called up and, and the player, the fans that do get mad at them, oh, you left us. Which I was one, like, I was in that party for a while until I sat down and understood the process. And, and then once you saw the process with the cup, you were like, it works. It works. The process works. Here's the thing. Would I like to see a call the cup to Milwaukee? Absolutely, but that's not the goal. That's not the goal. If we that's get it, a, great. That's a consolation. It's prize. a, it's a, it's a bonus. It's yeah. a bonus. I'd say a consolation. Well, I say like for like the the franchise of Milwaukee itself, if you're able to get that with the consistency yeah, and the yeah. success, it's a bonus. Like, well, yes. Awesome. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Well, the one thing we are is consistent. Playoff, playoff, playoff. We miss every couple of years, every what, five, six years maybe. Oh, and we're also consistent. At, I'm not even going to take a shot at that. You already know where I'm about to go, and so I'm just going to stop. <coughs> oh, uh, we're consistent too. <laughs> we're consistently getting headaches from Don Levins. <laughs> so with that being said. Uh, Do you have an opinion? So we can be done with this. No, it's just cool, dude. Uh, this idiot's giving me a headache. I feel bad for the fans. I feel bad for the players. Hopefully I feel bad for the league for having to put up with it. I feel bad for the ten year was it the ten years of wasted affiliation. Yeah, I feel bad for the fans of the Wolves. Uh, you guys have every right to be jealous of us. So feel free. You could jump on our bandwagon. Well, it's not that I, I don't want to do that. Like, like, <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to, like, like, not to say that they wouldn't be, like, fans or anything. Just like, saying, I want, I want to I'm not gonna, see I'm not gonna, crowd. I'm around. not going to toss salt at them, at the fans specifically on this, because it's, this sucks. I'm not saying they well, no, 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 no. I'm blaming the owner 100%. Yeah. Because this sucks for the fans. Yeah, this sucks for their fans completely. The fans deserve so much better from ownership. Especially since it's the fans pouring money in their pockets to go to games and buy merch. Uh, and then you, he doesn't even go to games. 
from what I've found out, he goes to like one a week. We see like what is it? Still how many times? Of how many times do we bump into Harris Terror at, at the Panther every game? Arena? Every Day game, almost, almost every yeah. game. Or I see him every game. Yeah, I almost like see him. I, every I now see and him then. a lot. I haven't seen him the last few games. And but I saw him. I saw him. I haven't looked. And it's not in a, like it's the beauty of the Panther Arena is that there's no like special boxes or anything. Yeah. Like yeah. I think he even sits on the glass every now and then. Yeah. He's always he's always he's by, he's by, the bench. He by the bench. Circle. No, he he's actually on the circle. opposite side of the bench. Really? Yeah. No, he, he sits, he sits, sits broadcast. Sits by. Huh? He sits on the broadcast stand. Opposite side of that, because broadcast is right behind the Admirals bench. Oh right. So he, he sits, sits by the power box. Uh, yeah. Okay. And he's right on the glass by the uh, where we defend twice. Yeah, he yeah. has the he has his little inner circle. Oh, he attacks by. Yeah. That's okay. about it. He sits in he's our approachable. Zone, technically. Yeah, he's he'll like him and he, his wife. They have no issue talking to the fans. You blame and say, hey, hey, Harris. Yeah. Yep. Um. Uh, so yeah, that's what I say, man. I feel bad for the fans. I really do. And, and and like I said, I do feel bad for the fans. I feel bad for the team. the, the teams. I feel bad for the players. I feel, I feel bad for the NHL affiliates. Yes. I feel bad for the AHL board of governors who have not yet to decipher all the BS that Chicago's creating. This is this is a toxic. This is a toxic group. Chicago's pretty toxic. Or this is a toxic. Uh, this is not a toxic group. Excuse me. I want to. I want to redact that. It's a that. toxic owner. I want. It's a toxic owner. This is not You're the way to do toxic things. Waste. This I'm is how really, we feel. This is not. This is not reflective. Governors demand that the wolves be sold. Or well, if he doesn't get an, if he doesn't get an affiliation, that's an immediate.